All right. Um, okay, welcome. My name is Christine Larson, and I'm going to be sharing a few things with you uh, about the upcoming class. Uh, I just want to give you a little background, a little point you to a few places that will make for a better experience, I think. Uh, here's my contact information in terms of Gmail and my website and my Twitter account. The goals of the class, of course, are to understand why and how well um, interfere, interferometric reflectometry works. Uh, we'll be teaching you how to use this new software. It's open source. And I'm going to be teaching you what makes an optimal site. And that way, I hope that you might install your own sites if you are interested in pursuing this. Um, but before the class starts, it'd be very useful if you could install the code, because that'll uh, leave us more time to do more interesting things when you're in Singapore. So uh, after I put, show you these slides here, I'm going to show you where the code lives. I'm going to show you how to install the code in two different ways. And then I'll show you how you know whether the code has been installed properly. So again, if you have time before the class, you can watch some of these videos. They're on YouTube. Don't worry about writing down the name of this link as I have that. Uh, I will make this uh, presentation into a PDF and it will be distributed um, by the organizers of the class. But basically, we're going to install Python from GitHub the first way. We'll run a test case. And then we're going to uh, install it using a Docker and run the same test case. And that'll be it for today. I don't want to go this too long. So I'm going to put that in the background. So where's the code? Well, for that, I'm going to just open up um, this code. Um, it's github.com, Christine M. Larson, GNSS REFL. It's your user manual. So if you want to know anything about installation, you go here. These are the three main modules that translate the data, give you a visual assessment, as well as estimating reflector height from the data. And then we have products, because most of you are interested in measuring sea level, or you're interested in measuring soil moisture or snow, things like that. We also have basically a database of use cases. So if you're interested in measuring a lake level, we have examples, soil moisture, and so on. So we have both a more traditional user manual as well as examples that will help you uh, learn how to use the code. All right, so that's where the code is. I'm now going to install it for you. Uh, I'm going to do it in a test area. And the first thing I'm going to do is just get clone. So this is a copy command, basically. And uh, it's in github.com, Christine M. Larson. And then it's just the name of the code. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to copy it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in it. And um, it'll depend on your internet connection. Um, but don't do this unless you already have Python installed on your system. If you don't have Python in, uh, installed, wait for my second installation. Um, example, we're using a Docker there. So basically, it's copying over the code. And then we're going to do two things with um, one is we're going to use set up some environment variables. And then the second thing we're going to do is set up a Python um, environment. And uh, then we'll install the code. All right. So the first thing is setting variables. Now I have three environment variables in this code and they allow the code to work on anybody's machine so that I don't have to know the physical address of these folders. They all have a name. And this is what I've called them uh, for this testing. So I need to make sure that the files exist. So I'm going to call them Orbis, Reflect, and Bin. And then in Bash, you use the export command. Uh, you should save this somewhere so it gets um, Execute it every time you log on. So most people would put that in their .bash rc file. So I've, I've made the folders. I've set the environment variables. The next thing I want to do is set up an environment uh, in the Python world, a virtual environment. So that is the command here. This is a Python 3.9 package. Do not install this code if you're using Python tune only. Uh, now, to get it to work, 
um, uh, you say source EMV bin activate, okay? And you'll know you have it turned on when you see that, all right? Uh, the next thing you need to do is install some helper codes for the Rhinex files, which is where the GPS data are stored. And these are not my codes, so uh, they're a separate install. Uh, say dash H, um, no, I haven't done, sorry, I haven't installed the code yet, my bad. So the next thing you want to do is go to where the code is. When I did that um, get clone, it put it here. So now is when I say pip install dot. It's basically telling my machine, make, make the package, OK? And if you've done any Python stuff, you're used to seeing this stuff um, come across your screen. It can be really scary. We'll get a warning that it doesn't like something about my pip. And now is when you say uh, install exe-h, OK? All you have to do is tell what kind of machine you're using. And I am working on a Mac with a new chip. So it's going to give it the Hadanaka decompression code and GFZ Rhinex. OK, now we can do our test case. I'm just going to translate a file and look at it quickly. So for translation, I've got to go get the file. And then I've got to translate it. And I need orbits for that. And that's why I set up all those file systems. So I'm going to pick station P038. I'm going to pick the year 2022 and the day of year 150. I'm going to tell it to look for it at the UNAVCA archive, uh, but it uh, that is the default. So it'll look there regardless. Now, the first thing it's going to do is uh, set things up for the code. If I were to run this exact same command, again, it would take a lot less time. And that's just the... Uh, uh, the effect of running the code the first time. Uh, but once it gets set up, it's pretty quick. Um, and again, it's getting files, so it depends on your internet speed a little bit. If you have your own code, I'm sorry, if you have your own files, it'll run very, very fast. Um, and then the next command is just to get a visual assessment of the data. It uses the exact same commands. Um, you're going to see two um, plots come up. And um, oh, the first one is the periodograms of the rising and setting satellite arcs. And you can see the titles tell you the geographic coordinates. And we're trying to measure the reflector heights. And that's exactly what we see here along the x-axis that this is a very flat site. And these periodograms are lining up extremely well. And we'll talk about why that is in the class. There's a summary here where, again, the reflector heights are plotted along the x-axis here, where blue has been cited as good. You've passed your um, quality control metrics. Below it are the quality control metrics. And that gives you an idea of whether you've set things too tight or too loose. So I just showed you that to show you that it's easy to install the code, hopefully, and, and get this running. So what I'm going to do is now going to turn off that virtual environment. And I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use the Docker install. So I'm going to go to testing underscore Docker. OK, hopefully there's nothing there. Um, really, it's it can be really easy to, to install a Docker. First, you have to have the code for Docker. So go to docker.com, and you can follow the directions from our install. But then we just need the command. So I'm just going to go here and go to GNSS Reflect, because I don't remember the command. So I go to Installation. I go to the Docker. The nice thing about Docker is you don't have to install Python. And believe me, that's, that's a plus. But here's the command. You copy it. Um, Fingers crossed. Yay. And you are you're 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 ready to go. So all I'm gonna do here is run the same two commands. Right XSNR, ESO 38, 922, 150. Once again, tell it that it lives at UNAVCO. And you see it's faster because it's already set up that package. It still takes time to transfer the files, but 
the people who made this docker, which were uh, Kelly and Tim from UNAFCO, have really um, put this all together so that you don't have to worry about all the install stuff. But it still took six seconds because it had to uh, FTP the files. All right, so let's look at it. Now there's one small downside. Uh, there is no viewing capability in this Docker. So it tells you where the files are. And, and specifically, uh, you're gonna have to go, sorry, that's not right. I wanna do, oops. I wanna do one thing. Oh, this is embarrassing. There, well, I, I apologize. Uh, I just wanna show you where things are. Um, it's right within that testing directory um, and the files are here. So on a Mac, you just click on them. There they are. So that's the, there's a trade-off there. You're not gonna get the visuals. Uh, you're gonna be told where the files are and that's that, okay? So uh, I think I'm going to stop there and thank you for listening. Stop.